Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Australian Defence Force Academy. It's great to have you here on our open day. And for the first time ever, we are holding the ad for information sessions in our brand new auditorium. So hopefully you feel as privileged as I do to be in this auditorium. You are in what we class the Reg Saunders Theatre. It seats 800 people. Right next door, we have the Alice Ross King Theatre, which seats 400 people as well. And the pilot sessions will actually be undergo, undergo, undertaken in that theatre uh, throughout the day as well. Uh, we are filming today. You will not be filmed. As you can see, I'm at the moment the star. And later on, Professor John Arnold will be the star. He's here from, from the University of New South Wales. We also have uh, several cadets uh, posted throughout the auditorium uh, to, for questions later on. So could you please wait for the microphone to come to you so that we can get the question on tape. It will actually help later on for others who may view this video uh, that we put online on YouTube. We also have representatives from the Defence Force Recruiting uh, to be able to answer any specific questions about Defence Force Recruiting. The very first thing I like to say is, uh, talking about the Australian Defence Force Academy, is that if you're not here to join the Australian Defence Force Academy, you are here to join the Army, the Navy or the Air Force and to be an officer of those and study a degree, that's why you would come to the Australian Defence Force Academy. So you need to have in the forefront of your mind, if you want to study at the Australian Defence Force Academy, you want to be an officer in the Army, Navy or Air Force. So can I just give a show of hands all those people that want to join the Army or are considered in, interested in joining the Army? Right. Uh, the senior service, the Navy. Great, we have Captain Jenny Dates here, the Director of Ad for Undergraduates. Uh, she's a long time serving in the Navy as well, so anybody got any specific questions there, I'm sure she can answer those. And who wants to join the best service, the Air Force? Great, that's good to see as well. Uh, I have to ask this question, how many want to be air crew in the Air Force? Great, we'll come down the front later on, we can have a chat about how hard that is. Up on the, uh, the screen at the moment, you have uh, our Chief of Defence Force Parade, which is run uh, at the graduation of our Year 1 familiarisation training. This is when you are inducted into the Australian Defence Force Academy and commence your academic training. It's done after the first five weeks of training. That was the 2014 CDF parade, where we also farewelled uh, Dame Quentin Bryce, the Governor General, as her last parade while she was the Governor General of Australia. Here is ADFA, three years and three minutes. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Australian Defence Force Academy.
quite a happy day for normally around 220 to 240 graduates every year. We graduate around 40% of the officer corps every year for the Army, Navy and the Air Force. And uh, ADFA itself is the tri-service and a premier institution for officer education and training. Uh, we need to make sure that people understand you are coming here to be an officer and you'll hear me up on about that over and over and over again. This is an officer training college at which we give you a university degree. It is not a university where we try and teach you to be an officer. The fastest way to not graduate from here is to not be officer material. Uh, we will give you a second chance at, on times when you don't do so well in the academics. And I know that the university has a great program for those that uh, struggle at times to get them through. Our mission is uh, at the top of that on the left hand side and as a military and tertiary training institution. And we need to graduate young leaders who have the potential to be the best that they can be with looking after the young other men and women within the Defence Force. On, the, on your right, I'll let you read that. The key words are highlighted. It is very important that leadership, the character of the person, officer qualities are what come to the fore here at ADFA. We also think it is very important that you have a liberal university degree. We need the officer corps to be broad thinking. We want to be able to handle uncertainty and be resilient. We don't need them to be thinking on railway tracks, which is why the university degree is very important for us to be able to be broad thinking, problem solving, analytical. Our values here, courage, respect, integrity, service and professionalism, are designed to take a 17 and 18 year old who thinks about themselves most times, no, all the time, and take them to a 22 to 23 year old who thinks about service, the service of others, because that's what an officer does. When I joke around about a 17 or 18 year old thinking about self, I was no different. I'm sure the mums and dads in the room were no different either. But the aim of this institution is to get to them a point where they are as good as they can be as an officer and a leader so that we can allow them to go from here and look after the men and women who deserve to have great leaders. Our values, sorry, our attributes, a student of life for life. We want you to want to learn and to keep learning. If the when we stop learning, we will be defeated. We need you to be a citizen of virtue. We need you to be thinking about how you impact others and you need to be doing that ethically and morally. That would lead to you being a principled leader, making decisions, the right decisions all the time. And finally, we need you to be a military professional. We provide the foundation to make you a military professional but you'll be sharpened in your own single service. The first three, in my view, are about what happens in your brain, how you act, and the character of the person. The last one are some of those skills that we give you to go out and fight. Because ultimately, that's what the Defence Force has to do. So how are you going to get here? All right, for those people who are coming in the senior service, Navy Officer Selection Board is conducted. If you are selected and made an offer, you will then go to HMAS Creswell and you will spend a year doing the new entry officer course. About six months of that is spent at Creswell and about six months of that is spent on a ship. Now, why does the Navy do that? Anyone want to have a guess? Because a lot of people get seasick. You want to check it out. No, what they found was if they exposed a lot of people to Navy way of life, they had a far better retention rate, but it also made people, once they'd made the decision to join, they knew what they were getting themselves in for. So it was really good for Navy in that area. So anybody who is joining to come to ADFA next year in the Navy will actually not be at ADFA next year. They'll go to Creswell, 
2016 and they'll turn up at ADFA in 2017 as a first year here. We then do the Army, sorry, the ADFA training, which is three years for all degrees except the engineering. Engineering do four years and we'll explain how this works a little bit later. But you do your ADFA training and then off onto your officer courses from that point. The graduation from here for a Navy person who joins in 2016 will be four years because they'll do one year at uh, Creswell and on the ship and then they'll come here for three years for their degree. For the Army, Army selection boards, you come to ADFA, you then go to Duntroon and then you're off to your basic courses from there. The difference that occurs here is that the engineers who join the Army, the people doing an engineering course, will spend three years here. They will then go to RMC for one year, then they will come back to ADFA, they'll do their fourth year of engineering, and then they'll move on to their uh, core trade from there. For Air Force, RAF officer selection boards, come here, do your three years, graduate from here. If you are doing a three-year degree, if you're doing an engineering degree, you stay for your fourth year, and then you move on to your career from that point on. There'll be a little bit more about how that works later on with the degrees when we talk about it. This is the current status, 15th of August. The number of people that we have in the brackets are the female population uh, that we have. Around 20% is what we have here. Uh, we're really trying to stretch that out. We believe if we can get that up to around 30%, we will find a, a much more significant growth of uh, females in the Defence Force. You can see that there's a spread across all three services, predominantly Army here, about 45% Army on, general, on average most of the time, 40 to 45. And uh, we have around 52 internationals studying here. And as of next year, we will have exchanges with the Texas A&M University for six people, two Army, two Air Force, two Navy. So we'll go and spend six months studying in the US as well. 995, we normally start the year around 1,050. Uh, and so you can see there is a slight attrition rate that occurs throughout the year. That's for a variety of reasons, uh, medical uh, failures and uh, not living up to the character traits that we believe we need in an officer. When you first arrive, you get put into a division. That's around 40 people. You live in the same block, it's mixed gender, it's mixed service, and it's mixed degree. So for example, five division, year one, resides within Alpha Squadron, there's four other divisions, and again, across that squadron now is mixed year. So there's a bit of support, a bit of mentoring that occurs within the squadron. So there's around 40 new people in each one of these year one divisions. And across us, obviously, five squadrons, they're divided out. That is run by XO undergraduates, currently Commander Doug Griffiths, uh, a Navy clearance diver. When you turn up, beginning of the year, leave period. Uh, that's for the, obviously, the second and the third years coming back. So people will turn up here. This, in 2016, you will turn up the day after Australia Day. In the past, we've actually brought them in the day before. We brought them in on the Friday and taken the long weekend away from you. Mums and dads are pretty happy with that. It means they had probably the first time they had a, an Australia Day, they could go and do what they wanted to do. But uh, this year, uh, it's actually to try and a bit, long, bit longer leave for our staff. We're going to bring you in on the Tuesday after Australia Day. Uh, you will then commence our Year 1 Familiarisation Training, YOFT. You'll start to get used to these acronyms. And at that time, we have single service training for our year twos and year threes. They'll be off doing some level of single service training. That year, that year one familiarization training is a five week period. And I'll talk a little bit more about what that is later. We have academics and military training then goes from the, the finishing of your year one familiarization training right through to then some specific military training again in the, around the May. Preparation for exams, we have mid-year exams in the, the June period, and then we do mid-year board of review. Twice a year, 
Every student, every officer candidate, sorry, trainee officer is looked at for their academic, their military, and their behavioral performance. That review then determines what is done on either retaining, removing, or helping to fix some of those errors. Back into academics and military training. There is a bit of a recess in the middle of the year. There's that uh, study break. It's to give some bit of a rest. We know that it's pretty tough when you're studying for those 22 weeks a year. You know, it's tough. <laughs> exam, exam prep, end of year exams, and then we do some military training again at the end of the year, and then the final board of review uh, to determine whether you move to second year, third year, or graduate. This is year one familiarization training. Snapshot. Everyone joins in the top left-hand corner. They've got those great colored bags. We take them off you and we give you a green one or a blue one uh, to put all your stuff in. We then start to see how fit you are, a little bit of physical training. We then introduce some of the military training and uh, as you can see, men can wear makeup at ADFA. It's actually quite good. We then do a bit of traditional training. So what happens with our dining in nights? Uh, actually building in the military traditions of uh, why we do those. We have a lot of other different activities that we use for leadership training. For example, out on Lake Burley Griffin, uh, there's dragon boats, sailing boats, motor boats, rowing, all sorts of uh, boats out on there. I feel very privileged. I'm the only Air Force officer in the Defence Force that owns a boat shed. It's very, most of them are in Navy. Then start to build the fitness level up a bit more, see how, how we can uh, push you just a little bit harder. And then our, our reflection ceremony, our Napier Wallow, we, where we read uh, and recite the ADFA pledge. And at that point is the fact that we've decided that you are going to enter uh, on probation into the Australian Defence Force Academy. It also means you get an opportunity if you don't want to stay. However, I would always recommend give it at least six months. It's a tough transition. Uh, from civilian life into military life, so give it at least six months. That is the CDF parade. Mums and dads come back at that point and uh, have a look at you. They, can, they actually learn the fact that you can iron, you can clean, you can get up before 10 o'clock in the morning. There's a whole bunch of skills that you learn very, very quickly when you join uh, ADFA. And uh, I, as I say, the, the, the clothes that sit in the cupboard, every Every bit of clothing that's in one of your cupboards needs to be ironed. It needs to be set in a certain order. But it's about the discipline that you need to become an officer in the military. And mums are very surprised when they see the creases in the right spot. They see the fact that they can get up and go to the mess and eat. And then uh, the graduation, obviously the, the CDF parade, but that, that year we had Dame Quentin Bryce here. The, to present and uh, inspect the, the cadets and midshipmen. We have on our military program, military skills, leadership, and some defense studies. So things like history as well as covering military history. Uh, the, but primarily it's done on a two half day training per week and between seven o'clock and eight o'clock every morning. Most mornings commence at 6 o'clock in the morning and uh, they will finish at around 8 once you've uh, done a lot of the other activities that we have. Not your training at that point, a lot of, say, sporting activities. We then have uh, formal inspections once a week. I get a chance to go around and uh, inspect. I do that uh, one division uh, once a week. Drill and band practice. So who, who here plays an instrument that would be interested in joining? What sort of instruments? Yell them out. Great, yep, we need them. Anyone play drums? Anyone play the piano? Yep, sorry, you can't be in the marching band, okay? But if you've got another instrument, we'll definitely put you in the marching band. And we have uh, every, virtually every lunchtime, if you walk into the cadets mess, there is somebody playing the piano in there. There are some very, very talented young men and women here, and we run our own production each year. This year we did Fame uh, in here, uh, and did it four nights. So, uh, very talented people, and we look forward to having those join us as well. And uh, sports training in the afternoons. We also have uh, vocational extracurricular clubs. 
variety of different uh, activities that people can get involved in. And sport, uh, virtually any sport you can play. If we don't have a team at ADFA, uh, you can ask for permission to play in a local team, uh, particularly if you are uh, very skilled at that and it's not one of those sports. It might be an individual sport, not necessarily a team sport. It, uh, if you are skilled in that, we're not going to stop you from doing that. Uh, we just need to know what you're doing and when you're doing it. Uh, we do restrict the number of type A sports that people can play. Uh, what we find is uh, the young bodies, the extra stress that we put on it from a physical training perspective, that uh, people will turn up here, they are 10 foot tall and bulletproof. They may not have played AFL before, but they'll give it a go. And uh, next thing you know, they're getting injured. And the last thing we want to do is ruin someone's career because of a knee injury or an ankle injury or a back injury because they played a sport that they're not used to and trying to play it at a level that they probably shouldn't be playing. So we do restrict the number of type A sports that people will play to one in your first year. Now, I'm going to hand over to Deputy, Deputy Rector John Arnold to talk more about the university. There'll be questions after. Thanks, Alan. Good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you for coming to, to, to ADFA, and, and uh, I hope you have a very good day. UNSW Canberra is actually a really very interesting university. There's a university down the road that calls itself the Australian National University. But in terms of where we, we get our undergraduate students from, it's really UNSW Canberra that is the national university because we really do recruit people from all across Australia. And I'm going to see... I'm going to see what kind of a, a mix of people I have in, in the room today. So, first of all, have we got any people from the ACT? Quite a few. New South Wales? Queensland? Tasmania? So I don't leave it out. Tasmania? Yes? South Australia? Yes? Western Australia? Yes? Northern Territory? Nobody from the Northern Territory? But seven of the eight. I've got to get somebody from the Northern Territory before the end of the day. But we, we, we really do attract students from all around Australia. And that's really interesting. It actually lets us say lots of interesting things about the various educational systems that there are in Australia. So, for example, there were lots from Queensland, weren't there? there was a, your, your minister made some major announcements about changes to, from, from OP to ATAR and external exams. We're, we're really interested uh, in that kind of stuff uh, because we're really interested in the different education systems to see how it impacts in setting people up for ADFA. Now, I'm going to tell you what a fantastic university education you'll get if you come to UNSW Canberra at the Australian Defence Force Academy. But let me first of all start off by emphasising what the Commandant said in his opening remarks. And that is, it's very easy to think I'll come to ADFA because it will give me a free degree, I'll get paid, all those kind of things, that's not the reason to come to ADFA. I've seen people come for that reason and they don't last. You really need to come because you want to be an officer in the Navy, the Army or the Air Force. If that's not your aim, don't come to ADFA because you'll find that it's a poor career choice for you. In the end, you won't make it... Uh, through, through, through the program uh, and, and, and you will have wasted your time. So let me emphasise that, but if you do want to be an officer in Navy, Army or Air Force, then ADFA's a great place to come and the university will give you a, a, an undergraduate degree which will set you up for your career in defence and for your career post-defence uh, as well. So just, just some photographs. Uh, of, of, of life at ADFA. This is our, this is our telescope dome on top of our, uh, of, our, of our science school. This is our this is our graduation day. Our students graduate in purple, and you notice all of, you'll notice all the UNSW Canberra staff uh, are dressed in purple. So you know we kind of look a bit like the purple wiggles. But uh, every faculty at UNSW has its own colour. We have purple. I actually chose the purple. I chose that we should have purple. I had to have a big fight with the Faculty of Medicine who also wanted purple. Why do you think the Faculty of Medicine wanted purple? What does purple tend to denote? Royalty. It tends to denote royalty. And I think the, the doctors like to be associated with royalty. 
I didn't choose uh, purple because I wanted defence to be associated with royalty. Does anybody know why, can anybody guess why I chose purple? Yeah. It was my favourite colour. And I think when I, when I was a boy, I think my favourite colour was orange. No? Good guess, though. Yeah. It's tri-service. It's the tri-service colour. Thank you. People who get, go to a tri-service posting, it's normally called a purple posting. Uh, so we chose the tri-service purple for, for our graduation gowns. Uh, and you can understand that had we chosen white or khaki or, or blue, then I would have made one service very happy, but I would have lost a lot of friends in the other two services. So, so purple was a, really, was a really good choice. These are some students. Can you see them all sitting in the middle of the class? Do you think that's how it normally is? Or do you think the photographer made them all sit in the middle? I think the photographer made when I, when I, when I was When I was doing more teaching, I think the students used to sit kind of up here or over here so that the very moment I said, that's all for today, the they could be right out the door in, in, in five seconds. Uh, that's probably, that's probably, it's because I talk so loud, I suppose. If I talked quietly, I would have made them come to the front, wouldn't I? Because they wouldn't have been able to hear me otherwise. All right. So, get a fantastic education at UNSW Canberra. Our student staff ratio is nine to one. So nine students per, per academic staff member. Anybody know what it is in the sector? Have a guess, give you a hint, it's more than nine. 49, a bit lower than, probably around about 30, probably around 25, 30 to one. If I can give an example, first year courses tend to be big. Our first year engineering maths course has 100 students. I also teach engineering maths at UNSW Kensington, the Sydney campus of, of my university. How many students do you think there are in first year engineering maths at UNSW Kensington? Noting we have 100. Hint, it's more than 100. 400? More? More? How many? 1,000? It's about 1,800. About 1,800 students in first year engineering mathematics at UNSW Kensington. Why? Will you get a better experience in a class of 100 compared to a class of 1,800? Well, you're going to get more individual attention from staff, aren't you? And remember I said first-year classes are the big ones. Classes will get smaller, not through attrition, simply through people choosing different things uh, as they move further through their degree. And so class numbers get much, much smaller. So, really good student-staff ratio. Um, you should have just read the slide, shouldn't you? you should, wait, wait. I didn't know that. Um, our progression rate is about 95%. So that means if a, stu if a student enrols in a course, students do four courses per semester, two semesters per year. If a student enrols in a course, we would expect about 95% will pass that course. We compare ourselves with the group of eight, the eight research intensive universities in Australia, which are Queensland, Sydney, New South Wales, ANU, Melbourne, Monash, Adelaide and the University of Western Australia. And you can see that the pass rate there in a the course is about 85%. We get that information from government every year. I've just checked it within the last month. So that's saying at the group of eight, which are all very good universities, 15 in 100 failed. With UNSW Canberra, only five in 100 failed. And that's because Defence and the university cooperate very closely to ensure that students have every opportunity to be successful. But don't read that the wrong way. If you go and do a degree at ANU, say, you'll have to work really hard to be successful in that degree. If you come to UNSW Canberra at the Australian Defence Force Academy, you'll have to work very hard as well. Work hard on your degree, work hard on your academy military education and training work as well. But on the positive side, you won't be at McDonald's flipping hamburgers to try and uh, earn, earn some money on the side because you'll be well, you'll be well paid to be, to be here. So we do need people to work hard. Previous Commandant used to say it's not like Survivor Island. It's not like that every night we put the torches out on the parade ground and vote somebody off. We want everybody to succeed. We want everybody to succeed. Not everybody does, but we, want every, and we give people every opportunity to try and succeed, which I guess is what I've said at the bottom there. 
All right, what degrees do we offer? Now, we don't, we offer a limited set of degrees. So please pay close attention to what the degrees are because we get people who will arrive in January dead keen to do law or nursing or architecture we've had a couple of times. They're not degrees that we offer. Defence needs people. I mean, defence needs doctors and dentists and psychologists and all kinds of people. And they have their own way of recruiting those. It involves going to a civilian university, maybe being picked up partway through your study, uh, and then joining defence at the end of your study. If you're interested in that kind of a pathway, talk to the DFR people, the Defence Force recruiting people who are here today, and they'll be able to explain to you what the appropriate path is. These are the degrees that we offer at ADFA, and they're the only ones. So there are two generalist degrees, one in arts and one in science. I normally say to people that in a degree, what we try to do, first of all, in a degree, we can't teach everybody everything about everything. But what we do try to do is we try to do a mixture of breadth and depth in the degree. And the generalist degrees show that fairly well because in first year, in either arts or science, you will do four of these topics. So you'll do four of these topics in first year. That's the breadth part of the degree. We can't, we're exposing you to four separate disciplines of study. And then in second year and third year, you'll specialise in just two of those topics. And the two topics that you'll specialise in will, 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 of course, be two of the four that you studied in first year. And they may not be what you think they are, when you come into first year. Uh, I've heard Defence say that many plans don't survive first contact with the enemy, and so many ideas about majors don't survive first contact with the academics either, in the sense that you may well find that history at university is a bit different to what history was uh, at school. We have a business degree. I've got a business student down here. Tell, tell, tell us a little bit about your business degree. Introduce yourself and say a little bit about your business degree. Morning, everyone. Um, I'm Ofskida Deanna Alec, and I'm a second year business student. Um, yeah, business is definitely, I think, the best degree that you can do at ADFA. Um, if you're looking at a job uh, like mine, which is a lot of administration, or even if you have quite a large interest in business, um, definitely recommend it. Um, what kind of subjects did you do? I do uh, management, uh, accounting, economics. Um, you also get a chance to do some electives, so I was able to do things like geography. Um, yeah, so. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So some, some universities call it a commerce degree, we call it business, and it's covering off on those kind of topics, as you heard, which, which, which somebody uh, studying business would do. Uh, Information technology degree, I usually say that that's the degree that it's everything you wanted to know about computers but were afraid to ask, how to program them, how to use them in business. A strong flavour coming into that degree now, which I think will become a lot stronger uh, in the years ahead, is cyber security. And many of you will have heard that there was a, uh, what appeared to be a fairly popular website overseas, which was recently hacked. Uh, and lots of names and credit card details were exposed. Uh, and that's the kind of thing that good cybersecurity is trying to prevent. Uh, two technology degrees, particularly designed for people who want to be pilots. So one is in aeronautical engineering, and it's really the first three years of the Bachelor of Engineering uh, in aeronautical engineering. The other one is in aviation, has a focus on Safe, flying, flying safety, human factors, that kind of thing. Notice, by the way, though, that the aviation um, major is also available in the science degree as well. And the science degree has a... But lots of Queenslanders here, haven't I? So I have to do the OP thing. Uh, it's, it, it, it has a lower ATAR or, or a higher OP. I'll be really, really sorry when Queensland goes from OP to ATAR. Uh, and then lastly, the four engineering degrees, aero, civil, electrical and mechanical engineering. All four-year degrees, and as the Commandant has already said, uh, for Navy and Air Force, you do 
three years at ADFA, first three years of your engineering degree, graduate from ADFA and then stay on immediately for the fourth year to finish your engineering degree. For Army, you do the three years at ADFA, graduate, go to Duntroon for a year, graduate from Duntroon as a, as a junior officer, and then you come back and do the fifth year of your, um, of your engineering degree uh, immediately after Duntroon. All right, what, what does a day in the life of a student look like during academic time? Well, Commandant mentioned that there was one day a week of the Academy Military Education and Training Program, AMET, and you can see that for this second year student. Uh, there it is, Monday morning and Thursday afternoon. The student is doing second year arts. I should tell the story about how we found this student, I suppose. We, uh, we were wanting a, pro, uh, a timetable of a, of a student. Where are we going to find a student? It was late one evening and there was this guy playing the bagpipes down under the admin building. Now, I've got to tell you, when somebody's playing the bagpipes, you don't miss it. We knew that there would be a student attached to the bagpipes. So we got the student, got him up here and got his program. He's a second year art student. And you can actually see that I'm, I'm right about the bagpipes because there's his two periods of band practice uh, each week at, uh, at 7 o'clock. So he's doing an arts, he's doing four courses, so you can see them there in green, red, orange and blue. Arts courses are three hours a week, so he has 12 contact hours a week. Of course, in studying a university degree and in doing the AMET program, there is a requirement for preparation and also for uh, revision, assignments, all that kind of thing. And the kind of the pay, pale mauve periods are free periods for this particular student where he can undertake those activities, as well as have some free time, do some exercise, whatever. Uh, if he'd been an engineer, engineers also do four courses, of course, but they tend to have five contact hours a week. So instead of 12, he'd have 20 contact hours a week. But if we, if we count off the first eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, then all of the MOVE periods from Tuesday afternoon through would also be free periods for the engineer as well, to allow him or her to write up their laboratories, do their assignments, do their pre-reading, do their work for their academy military education and training program, uh, etc. Uh, HR slash OP. All right, now we do this differently to every other university. The way that you come to ADFA, of course, is through the Defence Force recruiting process. And the way you'll start your journey to get to ADFA will be by making contact with DFR. And we've got somebody from DFR We'll talk about the DFR process uh, in a minute. All we, most universities run a competitive process. So, so if there's a bigger demand for uh, electrical engineering, he picked because he's an electrical engineer, if there's a bigger demand for electrical engineering, then I'll just stick to ATAR. The ATAR score will go up a particular year at that university. If there's less demand for electrical engineering, the ATAR score will go down. It's purely a competitive process. How, 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 how high an ATAR can we take and still fill our numbers into first year? We don't do it that way. We set our ATARs or OPs at a level where we think people will be able to succeed in the degrees. For that reason, they are a bit lower than you would find at other good universities. And that's what they will be. The, 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 score, the, the numbers on the screen are what they will be for 2016. Now, there's no need to be scribbling all of this down. There's lots of information uh, at, uh, uh, at the UNSW Canberra uh, booths where all this information is available for you. But they will be the ATARs or the OPs. So that means if you go through the Defence Force recruiting process and get a letter of offer, which is a job offer with Defence, providing you have at least the minimum ATAR or OP, then you will be coming. There is never, this causes a lot of confusion, so I'm kind of emphasising it. There is never a case where they say, yes, well, you got a letter of offer and this person over here got a letter of offer. They got a better ATAR than you did, so they're coming and you're not. Doesn't work that way. Never works that way. If you've got the letter of offer and the minimum ATAR, then you're coming. We do have a program for really high-performing students, students who have very high ATAR slash very low OPs. Um, called the Chief of Defence Force Program, and in that program we allow students to replace some of their lecture courses 
with one-on-one -on -one research projects with staff. So I know, for example, that the first-year engineers, um, many, many of you will have heard of Médecins Sans Frontières, I'm sure, the, the Doctors Without Borders. There's also a thing called Engineers Without Borders as well, and they do projects associated with Engineers Without Borders. So that might be something like, uh, there's a village in Timor-Leste which doesn't have a very good water supply, it's polluted in some way, what can we do that would be cheap that would do a lot to improve the, the quality of the water supply? Really good problem for smart first-year uh, engineers. And, and it's our way of challenging our very best students. All right. That's it. That's it on the university. I'm going to hand over to DFR to talk about the Defence Force recruiting process, and then I'll come back and talk about what you need to do to get into the university. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, uh, and also to potential uh, officers uh, amongst you and the next generation of leaders in the Australian Defence Force. Uh, my name is Captain Dan Horrigan, and I'm the Senior Military Recruiting Officer at Defence Force Recruiting Centre here in Canberra. Um, I note that a lot of you are not from the ACT, so do not worry, we are not the only recruiting centre. There are 16 recruiting centres nationally, so whichever one is closest to you, I urge you uh, to note down the number 13-1901 and also uh, defencejobs.gov.au. So what am I here this morning to talk to you about? I'm here to talk to you about the recruiting process and the selection process in order for you to come to this wonderful institution. Unfortunately, it's just not an easy process of gaining your ATAR, rocking up to the Commandant and go, I've got the right ATAR, I'd love to study at ADFA, can I come and take a bed? and you guys will start training me. Unfortunately, it's not like that. The selection process is a rigorous process that can take at least 12 months through DFR. So, what is that process? That process is 13-19-01. It is the first number you will call to say uh, to a call centre that you would like to go to ADFA. I'll go to the next slide. So, making a booking, 13-19-01. I'll say that probably a hundred times this morning, but that is the first step of the process. The second part of the process is we will book you into a youth session to your closest Defence Force recruiting centre. Now that youth session goes for about six hours. You will receive several briefs, but you will also conduct an aptitude test. Now this is the first gate, as we call it, through your selection process into ADFA. The aptitude test it's just like a normal aptitude test that you can find on Google. So I urge you, if you're wanting to start the process, start spending some time seeing what aptitude tests are all about. Why do I say that this is the first important step? It's the first important step because at the end of your aptitude test, you will get what we call a job opportunity report. It's basically a list of all jobs that you are eligible for within the Australian Defence Force, not just ADFA, but the ADF as a whole. On that job opportunity report, if you wish to come to ADFA, you need to have scored high enough on your aptitude test that it is noted on your job opportunity report. So that is step one of the process to ADFA. Please note, if you do not get ADFA on your report, on your job opportunity report, you can resit that aptitude test after six months. My staff within a recruiting centre will also talk through other opportunities to you for employment within the Australian Defence Force. So, the next step of the process will be booking yourself in for an assessment day. So, the assessment day is your job interview day. During that day, you'll go and see the medical staff to ensure that you are medically fit for employment within the Australian Defence Force. You will also see a psychologist who will do their psychologist stuff with you. Uh, talk about separation from home. Talk about have you operated in stressful conditions. They will write a report for myself and my staff to ascertain whether or not you have the coping mechanisms to be employed within the Australian Defence Force. And then the last part of the process that day will be to see a defence interviewer. So one of my staff, which is basically a job interview. We're going to be asking you questions about what's your motivation for wanting to be a leader in the Australian Defence Force? And as the Commandant and the Deputy Director already spoke about, if your response is, I get paid to do a degree, that's not what we're after. 
We're after why is it that you want to lead men and women of the Australian Army, Navy and Air Force? Why is it that you want to contribute to your country? Why is it that you want to be part of a team? So these are the things that we're looking about uh, for your motivation and determination for wanting to be a leader in the Australian Defence Force. We'll also be asking you questions about what's training going to be like at ADFA? What's it going to be like in your area of expertise? What's it going to be like in the service that, are you, that you are wanting to go for? So in other words, it's just like any other job interview you would be going to. You wouldn't just rock up to a job interview and go, oh yeah, can I have a job here? You would do some uh, investigation in regards to what that job uh, is all about. Then we have an a, um, officer selection board. So for all officers coming to ADFA, you will go to an OSB. Um, that is run by the service. That's not run by DFR. That's just another level, um, I suppose, of selection where they look at your officer qualities, your ability to lead men and women of the Australian Defence Force. We also have, of course, a fitness test component or the PFA as we call it as well. So you will be required to pass this with, within four weeks of getting your letter of offer, as the Deputy Director spoke about. Um, depending on your service is, the, is depending on the requirement for that fitness um, test requirement. And then finally, you'll be appointed and get your letter of offer and then be studying at this wonderful uh, institution. So how long does this process take? This process can take up to 12 months. So I urge people, you can start the process at the age of 16. So for most of you, that's in year 11. Um, and then that will be completed by the time you finish your year, year 12 uh, time. We find that some people get held up in the medical area for a little, little while. Um, so you'll, you may have to get different tests done and a few things like that. So if you start during your year 11 year, that will give you all opportunity to ensure you get through to begin um, at the start of, of the education year. That is probably all I have to add. DFR are currently set up in the annex to the, um, to the cadets mess today, so I urge you to drop in. We have study guides available in there that outlines all the degrees that the Deputy Director spoke about, the ATAR requirements, further information in regards to the recruiting process uh, as well. Um, and also happy to take any further questions towards the end. We also have the uh, Ad for Education Award. So this is for people as it states up there. Um, in year 12, we present these awards. So if you're wanting to come to ADFA, you can um, do as it says there. Uh, we have 100 awards that go out nationally, um, and they're due on the 28th of February each, each year. The applications will close. Um, get a free iPad, uh, and also it, it also supports your application process. Um, in regards to your determination and your motivation for wanting to study at ADFA. The right hand arrow is the, um, the university process. So you've come through DFR, you've got your letter of offer, but you still need to get admission into the University of New South Wales. We do that, via, as do all universities in New South Wales and the ACT, through the University Admission Centre, UAC, now, I know if you come from a state other than New South Wales or the ACT that you will have Q-tax or, or whatever in the, in, the, in the various states and how you apply for university. To come to UNSW Canberra at ADFA, you need to apply through UAC. If you're in another state, you can also apply not to come to UNSW Canberra, but in case you decide not to come to UNSW Canberra, or we had a case a couple of years ago where somebody was coming that had a car accident just a few days before they were due to arrive uh, at ADFA, broke their leg, and so had to delay coming to ADFA for a year. They were able to go off uh, because they had an offer from their, in their home state uh, to study there. But to come to UNSW Canberra, you must apply through UAC. I don't, have, we, have we got anybody in Year 12 who's thinking of actually coming next year? We do? All right, so you need to apply on time. UAC is open at the moment. Uh, On-time applications close the end of September. You can apply late, it just costs a whole lot more. Um, you must put UNSW Canberra, one of our degrees, as your first choice. Now, we don't want you to do that to show commitment 
or that you think we're great or that you love us or whatever. It has to do with what the Commandant said earlier on. We actually want our people to be here on the 27th of January. Most universities don't need their people to be uh, at the university until late February, early March. In order to get you here that early, we need to get you an early round offer. Early round offers from UAC come out in the first few days of January. To get a first round offer, you need to have put UNSW Canberra as your first choice. That's how it works. You need to decide your job or particularly what degree you're going to do. Now, if you're coming into Navy or Air Force, there is a good chance that you will be recruited into a particular job. So if you're coming into Air Force as an aeronautical engineer, the degree to choose, of course, is aeronautical engineering. If you don't get the ATAR slash OP to get into aeronautical engineering, then you won't be coming. Army don't mind what degree you do. They, they tend to recruit general service officers. You can do any degree, which means you can change your choice when you know what your ATAR is. I should have said in my previous part, this is a really good piece of advice I'm going to give you here. It's got nothing to do with UNSW Canberra, just a really good piece of advice. If you had an ATAR of 99.95 or an OP of 1, which one of our degrees should you choose? The one that interests you. Please pick it. It's, it's really the same thing as don't come to ADVA for the free degree. You'd have to be wanting to be in the Army, the Navy or the Air Force, an officer in the Army, Navy, Air Force. Similarly, when you're doing a degree, don't ATAR shop. Pick the degree that you're interested in. It's a long time to study, a, to study an area that you hate. And worse than that, you might end up in a job that involves that stuff as well. So please, there's nothing wrong with having an ATAR of 99.95 slash an OP of 1 and doing an arts degree if that's the thing that you're interested in. Absolutely the right choice to make. Uh, is that all I need to say about the UAC office? So the, the, the UAC offer will come out in early January. Our people in student admin actually get, a let, get all the people who have letters of offer uh, from Defence Force Recruiting. They get all the ATAR scores from UAC, and they are all ATAR scores. The Queensland ones have been converted to ATAR by then. Um, and if you've got the ATAR score and you've got the letter of offer, then you're coming to ADVA. Very quickly, like all universities, we do offer bonus points. So we offer bonus points for very good performance in year 11 and 12. That's done automatically by UAC, and UAC knows how to handle the different educational systems from every state and territory in Australia. You can get up to five bonus points for that. UNSW, and you don't have to do anything to get those bonus points. UNSW has a scheme for elite athletes and performers. So these are people who are playing in state or national sporting teams, state or national orchestras, uh, um, uh, Duke of Edinburgh Award, school captain, major role in cadets, those kind of things will get, can get you up to five bonus points. There's a book about entry into UNSW Canberra for 2016. Pick one up from one of our stands. It has all this in, in great detail. And then lastly, and you need to apply to UNSW for that. And lastly, there's the Educational Access Scheme, which UAC runs. This is for people who have had major disadvantage during their Year 11 and 12 studies and can lead to up to 10 bonus points. So 10 bonus points means your ATAR could be increased by as much as 10. And that means your OP goes down by some, some amount that's far too complicated for me to, to be able to work out. So five, five for this, five for good performance in Year 11 and 12, five for elite athletes and performers, 10 for educational access. That's a total of 20, but UNSW never gives more than 10. And the reason for that is because the likelihood of doing fantastically well in Year 11 and 12 while suffering incredible disadvantage at school and playing for a major national sporting team, yeah, not many people tick all three of those boxes at the same time. But bonus points can help. We had a student a couple of years ago wanting to do a science degree. She was one point short. She had 74 and a half, and she needed 75. But we found if she changed to an arts degree, she got one bonus point through the HSC Plus scheme. That was enough to get her into a degree, and thus she was able to come to ADVA. And I think 
I'll, the, the, these are the websites. If you type ADFA into, into Google, all of these will come up. The Defence Force Recruiting one, which is the most important one for you to be thinking about today. Uh, the one for ADFA, the one for UNSW Canberra, and the University's Admission Centre with all the details as to how you, how you apply for admission to UNSW. And with that, I'll invite my colleagues back, back onto the stage. Uh, if people want to move on now to, uh, to, to look at the other things that are going on today, you're very welcome to do so. But if you have questions, we're very happy to take them.